Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, from me, Guy Monson, to our regular six-minute strategy summary. Well, global equity markets are up another 1% to 2% this week to add to a blistering performance since the announcement of the vaccine and the very market-friendly outcome, at least that's what we hope, from the US election. For the quarter to date, markets are now up 8 to 10%. But there's an underlying tension there. Global infection rates are surging. New York announced it will close its schools. South Australia began another of the world's toughest lockdowns, while even in Tokyo, the virus alert was raised to the highest levels. We have some political problems as well. The White House is pushing back, Steve Mnuchin in particular, Treasury Secretary, on both the Federal Reserve's lending programs and, of course, no new stimulus deal has been signed. While in Europe, disagreements with some of the Eastern European countries over rule of law have delayed the implementation of the badly needed European recovery programme. So this inattention, should we look to the future and vaccines and the election to drive equity markets up or worry in the short term about a double dip, a W-shaped recession emerging in Europe and much of the Western world? That's what I'll explore in the slides that follow and hopefully draw out some conclusions for asset allocation now and into 2021. So let's begin by looking at a bit of history, the world equity markets back over the last 10 years. All of them extraordinary, hitting new highs this week. The S&P 500 in red, the world index in dark blue. Extraordinary, even the emerging markets, so that's heavily China contribution in light blue. Gold rallying, of course, aggressively this year, but a catch up of world equities over 10 years. But extraordinary, given the depths of this virus driven drawdown, that we're seeing new highs in most equity markets. Equally extraordinary this year to date is that gold and copper have almost produced the same return. Now, gold is the classic defensive asset, copper the classic asset of an economic or industrial recovery. Extraordinary, the two are almost the same. So let's look at how things might go from here. We've got these two counteracting forces. On the one side on the left, you can see the effect of the lockdowns. These city mapper indices I showed last time for Paris, for London, New York, showing travel behaviour about a quarter of what it was pre-crisis. Look interestingly at how much more aggressively Paris and London reopened than did New York perhaps hinting at some of the surge in European infections that we've seen. Set against this is further good news on vaccines. We had Moderna and Pfizer last week. We had Astra Oxford this week, not declaring full results, but indicating that 100% of patients got a T-cell immune response, and particularly good numbers for the elderly. Now, manufacturing capacity looks good. Distribution is still a Herculean task, but we think there's more good news yet to come. The IMF is trying to balance those, as is the Federal Reserve, and they are worried about scarring and the risks of a W-shaped recession or a drawdown back into recession in Q4. There are two principal areas of worry on the left-hand side. The sharp rise in unemployment for the less well-paid and the less skilled workers, those basic and intermediate jobs showing 8% rises in unemployment, while the advanced, more sophisticated jobs showing virtually no impact. Those two blocks of bars, the G20 advanced countries on the left, the G20 emerging on the right, that second problem, of course, a huge drawdown for the emerging economies. Just this week, we've seen a default out of Zambia, but as to Ecuador, Lebanon, Belize, Argentina, five names compared to just three in the whole of 0809 already defaulting, a big rescue package needed for the emerging world in 2021. The third problem, of course, is still lingering uncertainty over Brexit. I'm afraid the talks this week have made little tangible progress, and we know time is short. Probably ultimately the first week of December is where we go to. Our view is still a two-thirds chance of a skinny deal, but the prospect of no deal still dramatically disruptive. So to complete the market picture, we need good news on here as well as on the US election or on the vaccine. Balancing all of this together, we at Saracen are still modestly overweight equities. Why is this? One, because we think liquidity is still hugely supportive. That surge in saving rates we saw during the virus, seen on the left-hand panel, has led to a huge accumulation of money market reserves, up almost a trillion since the beginning of the crisis. Now, it's come down a little bit as these are deployed back into consumer expenditure in the real economy, but they do offer support to asset prices and allow markets to look forward to better days in 2021 or at least 2022. Secondly, the US election is unambiguously a good result for financial markets. A divided House, Biden constrained by a fiscally conservative Senate, 
is the best outcome, as shown by these Goldman Sachs numbers back to 1928. 11% returns for divided government versus 8% per annum returns for unified government. Finally, of course, there's lots we can do to pivot portfolios to optimise this outcome. One, growth over value. Growth has led hugely this year, despite the rally we've seen in the last 10 days to two weeks, still 30% ahead of value. A lot of the opportunities we are now seeing in climate-related industrial moves are typically in more value areas, industrials, utilities, infrastructure, rather than the pure tech and cloud names that have dominated our digitization portfolio. Secondly, equity volatility has come back a lot, which means we can deploy some of our portfolio insurance tools again for those mandates that allow us to contain downside. So on balance, we're optimistic. We see the positive forces outweighing the negative, but it's going to be a tense next few months, particularly in the final wind down to the January 20th inauguration and, of course, the moves to implement fiscal plans across Europe, US and the rest of the world. Thank you.